Owen was her guy. And she said, that's what I'm gonna do. So she joined the Notre Dame High School wrestling team, the boys team, and beat the boys. That's that team. From there, she decided that she would train for wrestling under the watchful and very talented eye of Ron Hutchison, who also trained me. And from there, she decided to not throw away her criminal justice degree and her cushy government job, but she took a chance. She decided that she was going to go to Louisville, Kentucky. She put her German Shepherd Sonia and all of her belongings in a geo prism and drove to Louisville, Kentucky to try and get a developmental contract just on the chance of that. After a year, she did. Then after another year, she made it to the big show. She made it to Rob. And in her second match, she broke her jaw. She got surgery, got a plate put in her face, and got sent back down to OBW for another year. She scratched, she clawed, she made it back to the big show, and the Glamazon was born. Once the Glamazon was born, she changed history. I'd like to look out into this audience and see women that I know she influenced. I know she cut a different path. She wasn't a model, she wasn't a diva. Like I said, she was a wrestler and she made a difference. She was a diva of doom. She wrestled matches. She's what I like to call in the wrestling industry, maybe I haven't made this up, I don't know, but she's a three tool player. She looked the part, she acted the part, she wrestled the part. There was a reason that she was with Santino Morella and played the straight one. She could do it. They needed someone to make sure that Maria Menounos was safe at WrestleMania. She got the call. She wrestled every woman who came through that industry that probably didn't deserve to be there. Not all of them, but some of them. And she made them look like gold. She was more concerned with headlocks than hair extensions, with burning hammers than burnt sienna lipstick. <laughs> And I am very proud to be standing here to introduce the Glamazon Beth Phoenix, the mother of my child, more importantly than anything, and also a woman who I'd like to mention that for this industry, because she loved it, when she blew out her ACL, rather than go get the surgery, she said, I'd like to drop the title in my hometown of Buffalo and wrestle the handicap match lifted two women on her shoulders and Samoan dropped them in the middle of the ring with a blown out ACL. <laughs> now here's where I get my notes. She's a one-time Diva Champion, three-time Women's Champion, slamming for Diva of the Year, second woman to enter the Royal Rumble, second most pay-per-view matches in history for a woman, 297 appearances on Raw, Ladies and gentlemen, I give it to you the Glamo Mom, Beth Phoenix. Yeah. 
question like that, I would say I have no idea how to thank you. But in this case, Adam, I do know how to thank you, and that is fresh baked cookies for the rest of your life. <laughs> I don't think that's the cookie he was thinking about. You know what I'm saying? You are now the greatest seed for cookies. So I, I mean, I have a few notes here, so bear with my nervousness. Um, I'm so honored to be standing here in front of you guys, and um, all I ever wanted to be was a pro wrestler. Um, my grandmother and grandfather came to this country, they're Polish immigrants um, with their two children, and they didn't speak a word of English. But what they did understand was the art and the entertainment that was professional wrestling. Um, it was good versus evil, and it didn't require any particular language. You could get superseded language barriers. You could get with it, you could understand it, and so that became the entertainment in our household, and that's how my love for wrestling was born. Being on the floor at six years old with my 60-year-old grandmother uh, pounding the floor and showing her I could put feet, and you know, that history for my, the beginning of my love for the business. Um, my uh, my past was filled with lessons. Um, they say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it literally takes an army to groom a wrestler, and some of them do wear camouflage. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you guys don't mind, I'd like to share a couple of stories um, about some of the life lessons and some of the thank yous that I owe to all the people that I came across in my past that led me here today um, in my journey. Very early on in my career, I had an opportunity um, to manage Don Montoya against um, another talent, Brett LaCute, and I became party to what I later understood to be called a rip. Um, so I was brand new, had no idea what I was doing, and um, I was gonna be a manager in the match, and um, they decided that they would speak Carney in order to, you know, kind of make me feel the party fool, I guess, in this situation. So they proceeded to explain the match in these following terms, which I'm sure all of you or most of you would fully understand. So John said to Reckless, you know, we'll just give him around a little bit, you know, we'll do a universal spot and then into the Tennessee tiptoe, okay. Then uh, you grab the shake it. And uh, boom, 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 work it, work it, work it. All right, and then hit the Dixie do. Slip over, do the business, one, two, three. And uh, <laughs> easy as pie, right, Beth? And I was, to which I responded, um, what? <laughs> so, I mean, that was my trial by fire into the wrestling business. They patted me on the back and they're like, see you in the ring, kid. <laughs> and uh, to which, you know, as the match proceeded, um, I later found out that they were just trying to provoke nerves to initiate me in the business, and they helped me all the way through. And that was one of the very first instances of folks helping me all the way through. Um, I have to give a huge thank you to Ron Hutchison, who's here tonight, spoke earlier with Gail. So thank you, Ron. 